So I don't know if, if anybody wants me to go over what we went over last week. I'm going to completely redo everything we talked about last week, but put it in, in a much better terms that everybody's going to be able to more easily understand as to what's going on in the courtroom and what your role is and how the, the importance of, uh, of, a, of status over name and those kind of things. But uh, what I was going to start with, and I'm almost confusing myself a little bit right now. Um, yeah. Okay, the name. We're not even going to start with the whole man stuff, like the God created me, like blah, blah, blah. We've all heard it ad nauseum, the whole nine yards. What we know is we're stuck with a name that we're trying to deal with. We're trying to figure out what it is. So over tonight, it's, you know what, where's my black marker? Sorry, because I don't know if red's all that visible. Blue, no. I wrote on the board with permanent marker the other day. Is that? That's a green one. Anyways, okay, well we'll do it in blue then. Okay, we got the we got the name. Birth certificate name. Right. So last week I'd kind of referred to it as a presumption of law, which it really is. It's it's a presumption. I, I, I came to call it that, but for everybody else's purposes, because people understand it better. Oh, the red light yep, it's definitely on. For our purposes, instead, we're gonna we're gonna go back to a common phrase everybody always heard, and that's the legal person, because more people understand what a legal person is. I'm guessing, right? So we all know that this is a legal person, and where did it come from? Because everybody wants to go into court and they wants to make these arguments about I'm a man and I can do whatever I want. I'm a man. I've got God-given rights and this and that and the whole nine yards. And despite the fact that yes is true, um, like uh, in, even in a courtroom in, in Canada, in all these summary convictions courts, God law, God's law is supreme. And you can start to bring God's law into the courtroom, but you don't need to because that's not what's going on in the courtroom at all. It's kind of an irrelevant and moot point. Like the government knows you have God-given rights. It's the first line of the Charter and Rights and Freedoms, you know? It's, it's not really a question that's disputed, and that's not, what, that's not what's going on in the courtroom. We all know that because it's a hearing for this entity right here. Now, where did this entity come from? Your mother and father, when you were born, decided that they were going to grant you something, and that was to fill out a particular live birth and apply for the government, basically, where then you both entered into an agreement that created a trust. So that's why no one owns title to the name because it's kind of a it's it's kind of a, a, a legal person it was created by more than one party and those all those parties have a function and a role in that so no one really owns title to it but it's not about title and it's like what I explained to you earlier about cars it doesn't matter who's got the title to it titles even irrelevant it's who owns all the equity in that property because equity is king and that is that couldn't be a more true statement you own the equity it's yours you control it period it's the same as assuming liability, right? It's kind of like the same principle. If I'm assuming all liability for somebody else's actions, then I'm going to make sure that they're not doing anything that's going to get me in trouble. So it's kind of the same principle. Um, so the legal person is created. Now, the legal person is a corporation. It is. That's what corporations are. That's what corporate law is. A corporation is created in a trust agreement. It's a security agreement. Uh, that's going right back to the, the, the highest law, which is trust law period, that the Romans adapted to create corporations. And then that's been adapted to, to do what we're doing here. Hey, come on in. So before we get into more about this, let's see if you guys can get where I'm going with uh, corporate structure. It seems to me that it's a lot easier for people to understand corporate structure. Let's pause for a sec. I'm a business person, I understand corporations better than anything. And people don't understand corporate structure and that would help them when they walk into a courtroom because really what's going on there is nothing more than say a hearing for a corporation, a formal hearing. Because corporations don't do anything without formal hearings where there's a record that's kept, right? Like the minutes book of your, of your corporation. That's what's going on there. End of story. So you're not showing up as a legal person. You're showing up because a hearing is being conducted for a legal person that you have an interest in. And there's roles to be played there, and you're not, you're not doing your proper role, and you're getting suckered into something else, and you're taking all liability for everything that's going on there. 
So that is true. So corporations, what's going on when somebody creates a corporation? Um, let's start with, I don't know, what's the best corporation everybody's familiar with? What, Microsoft, Bill Gates? Doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know who actually owns McDonald's. We'll just say, yeah, we'll stick with Microsoft because everybody knows who Bill Gates is. Ray Kroc? McDonald's, Ray Kroc, is that what you're going to say or no? Could be. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go with Bill Gates. So Bill Gates is up here. Now, Bill Gates has a bunch of employees for his company. What's the third part of a corporation? Shareholders. You're going to get the crash course in this. It's going to make sense, and there's no reason to even explain most of this kind of stuff. Yes, well, yes, because Microsoft is actually, this unit is what creates, instead of Dean Clifford now, we've got Microsoft. So that's where I was going to this. So now this trust arrangement has formed Microsoft. And it's a trust agreement, right? So this is, this is trust law now. So we got Bill Gates, and technically, for lack of any kind of a better word, what is Bill Gates' role in that corporation? Administrator, Administrator president, CEO, Chief Software. director. Yeah, director is a good one. I like that one, but I like president, CEO better, depending on what kind of a corporation I'm dealing with. So let's just call him the director. All right. And the shareholders, which are down here, are the people that basically bought stocks in the company. Right? So they gave something to Microsoft, and they're expecting to get something back in the way of dividends. What does that sound an awful lot like? Investors. Investors, but more so? There you go. Your mother and father were the grantors of the trust that was created. And they put, because you were still a child, your share of the Commonwealth into an organization with the expectation that you're going to benefit from this. And so as soon as you turn the age of majority, you become the grantor and beneficiary. They stay the grantor and ultimately the beneficiary until you get, uh, the, until you take it over. I'm not really sure who that is. Oh, not a problem. <laughs> okay, now the employees over here, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave them called employees, but if we've already got now the director and the beneficiaries, who's the only thing that's left? Trustee. Trustees. What's that? Um, I guess when you're buying stocks and you're, there's probably an agreement when you're buying the stocks, that'd be the corpus. Um, there doesn't always have to be a corpus. It's always, it can be assumed or presumed, or it could be up to the director to set policy, which would be the direction that the, the organization is going to go into. Policy. So you've got policy makers. There you go. So Bill Gates up here, who is a director, he creates policy. That isn't the policy of Microsoft. It might not be him directly. You could actually instead call it, because obviously it's not just him. He also has a GA board of directors. Everybody knows corporations have board of directors that set policy. These people send orders down to the employees. This is the policy of the corporation. This is our rules. This is how we conduct business. This is your job. This is what you do. The employees do what they're supposed to be doing, directed by up top. And their sole purpose in carrying out that function is to make money for those people. These people aren't happy because these guys aren't doing their job. 
Or maybe these guys aren't setting policy properly. Who's the only person that can remove boards of directors from the board? The shareholders. Now we're going back that way again. That's how corporations work, that's how a trust works, and that's exactly what's going on with your legal person. But you don't know who you are. Most people are only acting as this. We don't, we, we're all that. There's no question there. The only problem is most people get suckered into acting in the capacity of one of these guys. Usually by getting a driver's license, uh, by getting a SIN number. Anytime you perform a function of government, you're acting as an employee or a trustee because you're performing a function of government. Yes? So originally the board of directors, the policy makers and everything would be your parents? Nope. They, they mysteriously haven't shown up or ever set policy or... Um, Nope. No. You're, you're actually the board of director and the beneficiary. Oh, yeah, but when you take over it, I'm talking about when it's originally made. It's so, the question about the trust. That, that never, that never changed. Based, <coughs> based on this model, now that we understand the power structure, how would you get a director? By hiring. If you are this guy right down here, and you are the sole beneficiary, where does the director come from? You appoint him. You appoint him. Why? Because, you're the because you own all the equity. You're, you're the one that appoints directors. You can appoint somebody else. I'm three or four people's directors right now. In the event they go to jail, I show up. And I'm their director in court now. Done it. They don't like it. They try to say you can't speak. Well, excuse me, I set policy. You're the public servant here. You obey policy. And I'm telling you that your statute, statutes are not being enforced against this legal person. Because you are directly affecting that guy. And my job is to protect his investment. You've heard of people walking into courts and firing judges before? It's happened. They don't know why, though. I've heard of that before. And the judge just gets up and walks out. You're a problem. You're a Well, it's just, okay, every time, okay, so everybody understands this now? We'll get into that, right? I got my own theory on this. Me and a couple of buddies, we disagree on a few points, but you know what? That, that comes down to that whole story of dinner again. Right? We really don't know what government's doing behind the scenes. We can speculate all we want on what's really going on, what they're doing, and, uh, and everything else, but it's just like five of us being out for dinner, and we haven't discussed who's paying the bill yet. And we can presume all we want what's going on, but all we can really do is just give our own position. Yeah, experiment, see what works. Well, no, but if, if everybody at the dinner table has a different presumption as to who's paying, yeah. if you're the first one to speak up and say, well, I'm paying for my own bill, you don't even give a shit about the rest of them. Now it's been, very, it's been made very clear you're paying for your own bill, so you're not part of all of that anymore now, right? That, that presumption's been removed. You could say, well, how, how are we going to pay the bill? You know, there's, oh, that's what, there's a million ways to address anything that's going on in the courtroom. There's some real fun ones. Yes. How did you get appointed? Director? Yes, director. Appointment. You appoint a director. I just did it right now. Gates in jail. Yep. How does he appoint you? I have power of attorney for people. And then I appoint myself don't you director. Have to officially have that power? No. Don't you, it can be verbal. Doesn't he have to appoint you? Are they going to argue with you? Don't they operate in presumptions? So you can do the same. Except you can back up your presumption. Right? Do you think they're going to challenge you? Are you, chal are you challenging my claim that I'm the director of that legal person? Are you actually challenging? How many people challenge Bill Gates when he walks into work every day? You know, dude, I don't think you're the president CEO anymore. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure I am. 
Now, I'll give you some background on this. This all started to kind of come together to me last fall, and I'd heard all there was to know about trust law and all this other nonsense and tried to make some of the arguments in court, and they don't listen to you. And it wasn't until I actually had to go and represent my corporation in court, my, my business, my construction company. And I got thinking to myself, well, geez, how am I going to do this now? I'm like, this is an actual registered corporation. See? You know, like, it's obviously I have to abide by city Winnipeg charter bylaws, right? Like, it's registered. How do I get out of this? I got thinking out about it, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, no. I said, my signature created the corporation. It's the trust agreement between me and the government that made it an entity. I said, I put everything into it. I don't remember signing anything that said I was going to obey all government statutes at that point. I'm like, so no. I said, nothing applies to my corporation. So I'm like, well, you know, piss on this. And I got, you know, I'm like, no, I'm going to go down to that courthouse, and I'm going to show who's, you know, I'm going to tell them what's what kind of thing, eh? And, Thing. I didn't do that, fortunately. I went down there that morning and I just walked up and, you know, you all get in line for the, to go see the city prosecutor, if anybody's ever been to court against the city, right? They don't have a crown, they got a city prosecutor. And then you got provincial prosecutors and federal prosecutors. Like, they're all different federal, provincial uh, crown and federal crowns. But anyway, so the city of Winnipeg's got a city prosecutor because the city of Winnipeg's its own entity. They got to have their own prosecutors. And I walk in there and there's this guy. Uh, and there's a lineup of people, and he's just yelling at these people, and they walk up. People are taking up their fines, and they're like, you know, his name. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm so-and-so. He's like, well, the city of Winnipeg Charter says this, and you are required to this, and blah. And he's just, he's just talking like a complete jerk to these people. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> and I'm looking, and I, right away I take my keys out, and I give them my buddy. I'm like, take my keys. You're driving the truck home. I said, because I'll, I'll be in jail kind of thing by the time I'm done talking to this Yahoo. And I get up there, and he just finishes yelling at some woman. He turns around, and he's like, uh, and he goes, uh, who are you? I said, well, I'm here regarding the matter for, you know, blah, 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 Manitoba Limited. He's like, all right. He goes, name? I said, my name is President and Chief Executive Officer of that corporation. He goes, oh. Oh. Um, okay. Um, uh, uh, wh how did you want to proceed today? I said, well, there's not going to be a hearing. There's no need. I said, I haven't seen any paperwork. I've seen nothing. And said, in fact, I'm going to need your mailing address because i got some stuff I want to send to you that I need clarification on. Oh, uh, okay. Um, uh, hang on. I'll get, I'll get a business card. Uh, oh, I don't have any business cards with me. Uh, I normally carry some. Uh, I, I don't have any today. And I was like, well, shit, if this isn't the same guy that was just yelling at people a couple of minutes ago. So I said, that's okay, just write your name down, you'll have my response in a, you know, a couple of days or whatever. I said, you'll get my paperwork, blah, 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 and he starts writing all his stuff, and he's like, uh, okay, and he's, uh, if I haven't heard from you after, uh, I don't know, like a, like a month, uh, uh, would, would you like to schedule another hearing? He goes, how does, how does uh, you know, March, March 26th sound? And I just said, I, just, I didn't say anything, I'm just like, and I stared at him for about 15 seconds, and he goes, uh, how about, how about April 16th? I didn't say anything. I just kept staring at him. He goes, how does April 26th sound? I said, okay. I said, I'm okay with that. I think that should be plenty of time for you to get back to me uh, with, uh, with the response to my paperwork. I said, thank you. And then I left. So about two weeks later, I sent him, and that's where I used to get it. I started talking to you guys at Freeman meetings about how important it is to establish your title at the top of the document, right? No one cares about Bob playing hockey. They want to know what position he plays, right? When the, when the, the chess pieces, I don't care what you name them, you want to know what their responsibilities on the board are. What you're acting as. What you're acting as, right? If, if a knight moves forward four spots instead of going forward three and going one to the right, the rest of the chess pieces are going to be going, what, what, the, what the hell? No, 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 that guy's only supposed to move forward three and over one. That's what's important. So, you know, names are irrelevant. Like, like I said, after the word man, your name is irrelevant. It's your title. What role are you playing? Well, today I went to court as president, chief, and executive officer of that corporation. And I'll be damned if his attitude didn't change about 180 degrees right after I said that. He knew damn well who I was. If I said Dean, well, well, Dean, <laughs> what do I care what your name is? We're enforcing city Winnipeg statutes against your corporation, right? Because they're going to operate on the presumption that I'm not the director or anybody else because that's how they operate in presumptions, especially if you hire a lawyer. We're going to get into that nightmare right now. So I sent my paperwork off uh, about two weeks later, 
And it was three pages long, and most of it is irrelevant, but the biggest parts were that I stated quite clearly in there, nobody is administrating City of Winnipeg Charter bylaws against my corporation. Nobody. Because I set policy for my corporation and nobody else. I told them, I said, I don't know how you guys even called a hearing without my explicit written consent, because I'm the chairman of the board and only I call meetings for my corporation. If you call one more hearing for my corporation without my written consent, I'm charging a million bucks and I'm charging it straight to your law license and I'm going to go lean it. And then I went on from there and I listed a whole bunch of things like that. Three weeks later, uh, my friend's down at court again for one of his own matters. He's sitting in the gallery. I didn't even bother going. I didn't care at that point. And the, crown, or the city prosecutor got up that morning and basically the first words out of his mouth when court was called, because remember, they, they can't just drop the charges when court's not in session. It has to all be done on the record. Everything they do has to be there, a record of it. So the first thing he did when, uh, when uh, court was in session, he stood up. He said, uh, Your Honor, you know, bowed, and they did their little whatever thing they kind of do. And he said, uh, Ah, he goes, it just occurred to me this morning that uh, the city of Winnipeg uh, uh, charter uh, is only, uh, only applies to legal persons. So uh, I'm going to have to state proceedings against every corporation before the court today. So they didn't want to do it to just mine because that would have been proof. So they stayed proceedings against every corporation before the court that day, even though we all know legal persons are corporations anyways. They just blanketed it out, and then afterwards they'll go back and they'll pick up the charges against all, everybody else. But all showed on the record for that day was that they stayed proceedings against every corporation just to make sure that I wasn't in there, so no hearing would be called for my corporation. There's no question. I'm convinced about that. And pretty much since then, I really haven't had a lot of problems with anybody, actually. Um, but that's kind of when we started to realize, okay, well, we got to start treating the legal person like a corporation. And we started to break down the corporate structure and trust law, and we started to realize that once we become the sole shareholder, which we are, once we realize who we are, and we realize that we actually are the ones who appoint ourselves if we need to, because we're just operating in different capacities, then the only role left for government is down here, that, which is where they are anyways, which is public trustees, employees. So they're employees. It doesn't matter who owns that corporation, whether it's Irrelevant. or anybody else. You're still an employee. Correct? Who sets policy? Who's in the position of authority? Yeah. Right? Well, so we started sending... Contracts with the corporation. Yeah. You're working for me. So we started sending people into court where basically uh, a friend would speak for another friend and they'd go in as the administrator for that legal person. So when the hearing was called, they stood up and they'd say, yeah, I'm here regarding that matter because the matter before the court is the hearing for the legal person. We've had people in the past go in and be, you know, uh, yeah, I'm here regarding that matter. Well, who are you? Oh, I'm an agent of that legal person. Well, of course you are. You wouldn't be here if you weren't an agent for a legal person, because the agents are anybody acting in any capacity for that legal person. So when you're an agent, you could be anybody. So that's where the presumption comes in. So they're just presuming you're one of those guys, trustee. And when you're a trustee or an employee of the government, you obey your commanding officer, and that's the guy sitting at the bench. The minute you walk in, you say, yeah, say, I'm, I'm here, I'm the administrator for or direct, whatever you want. I'm the director, I'm the, I'm the president and CEO of that legal person. I don't care what you say. You're establishing your status, your, your, your authority with that court on the record. Now, believe me, um, every time that we've done this, immediately before that sentence is even out, I'm here, I'm the, I'm the administrator, the sheriff, or sorry, the, well, yeah, the, the judge is yelling and the sheriffs are called in. <laughs> what are they scared of? If that wasn't a big deal, then, you know, they wouldn't be freaking out the way they do. And so the, the one time I know that my friend sat down and he just goes, I'm not going to jail today. I've got to be at work this afternoon. He sat down kind of thing, eh? So he submitted to their, their authority. That doesn't mean you submit to their jurisdiction at all. It just means, you know, this guy, this guy says he's this guy. You walked in, you said you were the, uh, the director of something. And then this guy over here. Public trustee, public employee, I don't care what you want to call him, he's a public employee, I like that word even though. The minute you walked up and said, I'm this guy, and the public trustee said, oh yeah? Sheriffs, we need sheriffs, I think we got an imposter here. And you go, oh shit, and you sit down. Well, I guess you weren't really him. 
They bluffed you, you lost. And you'll, you'll go to jail, they'll throw you in jail for that. Because you're a subordinate. And you were being insubordinate. That's contempt of court. For them, because you were disrespecting uh, a superior officer, basically, which is one of them, and that's contempt of court. Okay, so we'll call it, we can even call this administrator. I don't really care. Administrator. Why do you say you're the executive of that state? Yes, I like that one. <clears throat> but I, get, I, I just get away from a state law altogether. It's trust law. When I'm, in, when I'm speaking with government or courts, there's no reason to get into trust law. That's why I kind of made it more simple this time, because if people treat it for a corporation the way it is, it's much easier to understand the roles that are going on, right? And it's all you got to be. All you got to do is be the sole shareholder, the sole beneficiary, and you hold the seat of power, period. Because these people appoint the administrators. The administrators set policy for public trustees, and then public trustees carry out their orders for the benefit of these individuals. So you could say, I'm the beneficiary. I appoint you as administrator. Oh my God! Why would you want to do that? Well, I know, I know, but some people do that. Yep. Seriously? Yeah. And they probably just go, yeah. "You're damn well, right." I'll be happy to do it. Yes. That was something that, uh, you know, after I. Oh, they, you have no idea. Well, that depends. You know, the judge might decide to be benevolent that day and just say, oh, man, yeah, that guy just appointed me. That guy just appointed me the CEO of Microsoft. Man, I like that guy. You know what? I'm going to go easy on him. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because it dawned on me, like, even two weeks ago in your first lecture, you know, like, I remember when my parents died, I was obviously beneficiary of the estate, but yep. also the administrator of the will. Yep. Uh, and so that struck me. Yeah, yeah, I guess I am the administrator for that legal person. Yeah. The beneficiary. Yeah, because, uh, you know, when that's why when people have power of attorney for someone else, mm -hmm. you basically are acting as them when they're not around. Mm -hmm. It's just giving you authority to, 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 to not, not to be them, to, to, uh, to act in the capacity that they would if they were around, right? Which is probably that guy right there. So, and there's, I can get into, like we've gotten into a lot different, bigger stuff where I could, this board would be full of stuff by the time we're done and everybody would be running around going, what the shit is he talking about right now? And there's no point getting into that because it's all just proofs of what I'm showing you right here anyways. And this just makes sense, it's corporate law. It's, it's the most, it's hidden in plain, you couldn't hide something in more plain sight. Because it's the same way I run my construction company already. And I'll be damned if it didn't get that response when I walked into court there for the bylaw violations. And as soon as I told him who I was, and I don't mean being Clifford, I said, no, no, I said, I'm the president and CEO of that corporation. Well, holy shit. You took charge. Yeah, the big boss came down. Now, that, that gets me into another thing where this is some of the stuff I'm going to say right now, I, a few people that I, I, that I talk with on this frequently disagree with me. But it's my firm belief that the courtrooms are not for any of us. Courtrooms are platforms for public trustees. We're not meant to go down there. So that's why it's assumed we're just another trustee when we go down there. So I touched on last time how, how a lot of us were thinking, well, maybe the judge is acting as this, and you know the Crown's acting as this, and everything else. Well. No, if you receive a paycheck from the government and you're a government agent, then you're one of these. You can't be anything else. That'd be operating outside your mandate. You're only a public trustee, an employee, and that's all that is in that courtroom. So now we don't even really go to court anymore. We just send the courthouse down instructions from the administrator. And we follow proper procedure. So no, no, my, 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 my commands came down the, the proper chain of command. It wound up in the court file. And that's why the judge reads the affidavits or any other materials in a court file, because they're the commanding officer of all these guys. Maybe they're looking for instructions. You set policy. But if you walk into a courtroom and you just become another public trustee, there's no officer of your corporation there from, from up top. They're, they're going to enforce statute. Well, and that's another thing, too, is the only the statutes only apply to public trustees. And so we've touched on that before with other people. Is that's what a SIN number does. A, SIN, a social insurance number creates 
a new agent of the government that you're filling the role as. So ultimately, they could have you playing all three roles at different times because you can do that without question because you're acting in a different capacity every time. So if you're getting a social insurance number, <clears throat> and if you read through the can like all the statutes uh, for Canada, we know damn well that uh, that business that they define Canada, the, what Canada defines business as, is performing a function of government. It's right in their own law books. If you're not performing a function of government, they can't they can't force the income tax act on you because it only applies to agents of the government. Period. That's why if you have a social insurance number and you're acting in the capacity of an agent of the government, you're going to get taxed. That also means that most other statutes can be enforced against you because the minute you're performing a function of government, public performs, government performs public service, doesn't it? All there is. Well, that's what that is. There you go. If you're performing a function of government. Now, if you're putting a Manitoba license plate on your car, right, it actually designates your car as being used for a public service. It's right in the insurance payments. I've shown people that before. Oh, hang on, I'll be right back. No. So, is there anything with that that people don't understand? We can turn a light on here, by the way, too, if you want. It's going to kind of dark in here now. No? Let's flick one of those guys up. Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just it's the most simple thing that there is to really understand that that's really what's going on. I think that probably 90% of the people out there teaching this stuff right now are probably working for the government, making sure they're making this as confusing as possible for people. Yeah. So if they want to do business with Canada, yeah. we're best off maybe to create our own corporation. Well, no. What's wrong with this one? Yeah, you're already the sole shareholder, and that, that's, that's the money roll right there. Okay. When you own all the equity, when you've bought all the shares for a corporation, you appoint the people that run the corporation. Jason, I have a question about the actual corporation. Yep. As soon as you incorporate it, you're basic, you basically, by the way, the government portrays this, you basically gave it to them because it's an entity of itself. No, and no one owns it. You understand, a, you, know, you understand what, I understand what, you're, what you're trying to say. So if you had an incorporation, how do you prove that they don't have any rights to it? Well, they don't have any rights to it. <clears throat> but <clears throat> there's, <clears throat> sorry, there's certain roles that are inherent when, when creating a trust because you're giving something to the government. The government's got to give something to you kind of thing, right? So if you're supposed to perform a duty and they're supposed to perform a duty, consideration. consideration, all that kind of stuff, though that question comes into play, but... We could presume all we want about what we're supposed to do for the government. Well, I'll give you an example. Okay. Okay. So let's say you own an appropriation. You are the, the sole proprietor of it, right? And you can't be a sole proprietor of a corporation. Well, you're the full, uh, you're, the, you're the only stockholder. Okay, you're shareholder. Shareholder. Too. Yes. Now, if it's an entity of itself and you create it, right, and you... How do you transfer assets between yourself and the corporation and without corporation Canada watching out the picture? Well, <clears throat> Canada doesn't own any of the stuff that the, the corporation owns. The corporation owns it itself outright. It's its own legal entity capable of owning property, capable of buying and selling, capable of carrying on business. That doesn't mean it's carrying on business under Canadian law. So you just have to dispute that presumption? Ask them. Don't ask them. Tell them. Say it's, it's, and when you're contacting them, you contact them as this guy up here, right? And just ask them. Just say, uh, or, or tell them, say, hey, um, as far as I'm aware, I've made a determination that we're not obligated to obey any of your statutes. In the absence of proof to the contrary, yeah, I if, presume this. There you go. If you have proof to the contrary, you've got 21 days to respond with proof of a claim. Otherwise, you know, what more proof could you need in a court file? <clears throat> Yep. Yep. Are you claiming I am an employee that's obligated to obey the charter of, of the Corporation of Canada? They can try and 
there, there's a million different ways you could you could approach this kind of stuff. It's along the same lines of uh, when we talked last week about the, uh, the 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 newbie course, the claim of rights and stuff like that, and about how people were like, and we fell victim to it. Uh, you know, two years ago or a year ago, we were sending in these massive claim of rights that were. You know, like the only thing that I missed in there was my right to shave, you know, first thing in the morning, kind of like everything was in there. And then we kind of got thinking about the flip side. We're like, well, wait a minute, instead of telling the government everything we feel is our right to do, why don't we just contact them and say, hey, is there something you're claiming I can't do? So now it just became a one word sentence instead of 30 pages of nonsense that we don't, nobody really cares about. Because they're not disputing I have human rights, right? That's not even the question. That's not even what you're in court for if there's been a real, if there's been a charge. In the capacity, the role that you were playing when you got pulled over, if, if you were acting in the capacity of a trustee when you got pulled over, you were breaking one of their statutory obligations. And yeah, the man can be held responsible for that because that's, that's the, the position he was playing in the, in the hockey game. He's not going to the penalty box because he, uh, because, you know, his, some, he violated somebody's human rights. Going to the penalty box, he broke one of the rules of the game when he was playing a position in hockey. So no human rights were violated. Because if you agreed to be an employee, you agreed to abide by employee rules. And if you didn't, you got punished. Unless you weren't one of these guys. It starts to get confusing from there because people always have like specific questions about things that are not really part of the model, so we could get into some stuff like that. That's it. We'll pause it there, take a break for a few minutes, and then people can ask questions after this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, it, just anybody, but uh, mostly you want to give notice to the government. So just for the camera, we were just kind of all talking here for a little while off camera, and people were starting to wonder, well, you know, how should we get started in, in kind of doing some of the things that we want to do with the government? And so I was just going to explain that the first starter and the first great thing to do is that if you have a business relationship with the government, you may want to establish your roles. Because if your roles aren't established, then like I keep saying about the dinner scenario, you're just a bunch of people sitting at the dinner table with everybody wondering who's going to pay the bill. So you want to be the guy now that walks in and says, hey, before we have dinner, I just want you guys to know uh, we're all paying our own meals. Okay? So the way you do that with the government is to send them a letter saying, you know what, uh, the birth certificate is the proof that you're the, the, the shareholder. That's your receipt. You own all the equity in that name. That's your receipt. Period. So you're the sole shareholder down here. And you say, yeah. If you guys are disputing the fact that I'm the, the, the sole shareholder, uh, you know, feel free to let me know. But as it stands right now, I'm telling you, I am the sole shareholder of, and I don't mind using my name by the way, or I don't mind using the name of my legal person while we're doing this kind of stuff because if I really feared these guys and I thought they were going to come shoot me or something, everybody's always, oh God, no, I don't want my face online or I don't want people to know my real name because, uh, you know, I think they're going to come and kick my door in and beat me and stuff like that. That's insane. Like it almost, ne it never happens actually. I was going to say almost never happens. It never happens. I've never actually heard of that happening. Okay? Nobody's actually persecuted because they send stuff to the government. Believe me, if, you, if people saw half the stuff I've sent to these people, I should be in a wheelchair right now if they actually came and kicked your door in and beat you up for doing that kind of stuff. Or if, if not, dead. So it doesn't happen. And I've been pretty belligerent at times. And I've seen, some people have seen some of my paperwork, and uh, I'm not, yeah, I get pretty belligerent with them because I just don't care. I feel bad sometimes even after I send stuff. But anyways, that's irrelevant. So once you've established this, what prevents you from saying, I believe you guys are all actually there's no comma there. I'm this guy, that's what your letter says. And I believe everybody that works for the government are these guys. That's all of you. If you're claiming something different, let me know. I'm gonna give you twenty one days. If you don't respond, then you've admitted to being this, which they are. And then you say, and also, just so you know, because I'm the, the, the sole shareholder and I want to protect my investment, I'm appointing 
this guy as the principal administrator of my legal person. He's going to handle all policy because I want to make sure my investment's protected. If you guys are claiming otherwise, you have a different idea, or you're claiming I don't have the right to appoint the director of my legal person, you got 21 days to get back to me with a lawful excuse as to why I can't do that and that I'm full of it, and this isn't really what's going on. Question. Yes. Are you purposely writing your name and heading in? Uh, Absolutely. Perhaps? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. I have to pause for one second again. Sorry. And then we'll get back into this. Go again. Okay, we're back. You asked if there's a, a reason why I'm changing the spelling of my name. Specifically using all caps. Yes. Yes. This is the name of the legal person. This is the person, legal person, what corporation? Capital N. That is the legal person. That is the trust. If you want to call it a trust, call it a trust. If you want to call it an estate, call it an estate. It's a legal person. It's the best thing to call it. It's the most applicable. So that's the birth certificate name is the legal person. It creates an identity. And that's what we talked about before. And in that identity, there's different roles, just like a chess game. Right? The game's called chess. In it, there's pieces that have different names, but what's more important is what function those pieces carry out. Right? So the sole shareholder is the guy that put all the equity into everything. Grantor, if it's trust law. The grantor is appointing this guy. Yeah, and I say I like to say show, show, uh, sole shareholder because corporate law is easier to explain than trust law. There's trust handbooks that are this thick, and you could almost come up with anything from from reading half the crap in there, right? Like it's just unbelievable complicated. Even Weiss's, yeah, even Weiss's trust handbook, which is a handbook. A lot of people read that and they're like, huh? You just can't understand it. You're not going to walk into court either. And it's the same thing as the UCC argument that, that people like to do. You know, there's all sorts of people learning UCC, and they're going to go into court, and they're just going to have at it with that judge in UCC law. What a bunch of nonsense. You cannot possibly argue UCC law in a court with a judge. And it's irrelevant. It actually has no real bearing on what's going on. It does, but it doesn't. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an art. Why make a, a complicated argument out of a simple argument? And this is very simple. You have shareholders. Everybody knows corporate law. Everybody knows that shareholders appoint directors. And if the director is not doing their job and they're not getting the return on their investment they're like and they don't like the policies the directors are doing or the directors are stealing so much money from the corporation that it's insolvent, then they vote them out. They get rid of them and they put somebody in that is going to make them money on their investment. So that's where the true seat of power comes from, and that's who you are, and that's what the birth certificate is. That's why it's such an important document. It's a receipt for the investment, which makes you the shareholder. There's probably a million different terms for it, but I like describing it that way because it's easy to understand. Everybody can understand that they're a shareholder. It's simple. And it's simple to understand that the shareholders appoint the director. The only reason I put my name there is because it actually it, it, it identifies me a little bit more clearly, right? The man. I'm the man that's acting in the role of director, administrator. I mean, a director directs movies, right? Who walks in and tells the director he's doing a shitty job and replaces him? Nobody except the people funding the movie. You're doing an absolutely awful job of Transformers 3. We're replacing you. You ruined the whole damn movie. You're fired. Who else does that to the director of, the, of a movie? Nobody. Except these guys. And the director has a whole bunch of employees. So that's the easiest terms to explain what's going on. And what was the reason we started bringing this up again? Oh, yeah. 
That's because that's why you want to contact. It's a lot easier to, to, to clarify what's going on before you run into problems. Because clarifying what's going on when you're at the cashier, trying to decide who's going to pay for the meals and get into an argument, is too late. That's when it gets messy. And people are pissed off and a couple have left already and I'm getting stuck with the bill and holy geez, people are mad. You know, like that's just not the way to do it. Before you're sitting down, hey, you know what, before we even go for dinner, I'm going to pay for the meal. Or we all pay for our own meals. Like just get the terms of your business arrangement, which is what that is when you're going for dinner. It's all, it's just a, a microcosm of something that you could, you know, extend to every situation in life. Just get it out there first. Contact them and say, hey, I just wanted to clarify something. Because I got this birth certificate right here. And it's my understanding that I'm this guy. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it's also my understanding that because I'm this guy, I'm appointing this guy. Because that's my investment. And if I'm this guy and I'm appointing this guy, that kind of really only leaves you guys. So it's my understanding that that's who you guys are. Correct me if I'm wrong. If they don't correct you, then you're not wrong. File that in court, in the court record. That one document, it could be four lines long, and send it from this guy. Because you're not in court because of rights, but it's got nothing to do with human rights. Nothing. You could basically equate court to almost like a boardroom, except there's no board of directors there at all or a, a meeting of the trustees, an employee meeting. So you would draw up a document outlining these facts. And yep. you would appoint the yep. human well, Dean not Clifford as director, and you would do it on behalf of Dean Clifford, all caps, legal person. Because it's a corporation. You would sign it as authorized representative by... No, I would sign as director. As director? Yeah. That's the seat of power. Oh, okay. And the only person that can remove you from the seat of power is this guy, and who's this guy? Sucks to be them at that point, because now they're 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 regulated to this. That's all they got left, and that is who they are: they're public employees. That I can get into much more detail about how the whole thing works, but this just keeps it so simple you can't not understand it. Yes, and that's what's going on. So the, the man is irrelevant. What role are you playing? In fact, if somebody ever asked you who you are, you never have to answer more than man. I'm the director. Yeah, or I'm the director. Well, director of what? Well, who are you looking for? Ah! You know, they get mad at that point. They don't like that. You know, well, I'm, you know what's, what's your name? Well, man. No, what's your real name? Are you saying I'm not a man? <laughs> like what are you, are you are you are you are you gonna, are you challenging me to a fight? Are you questioning my manhood, or are you saying I'm not a member of mankind? Like, yeah, like where are we going with this, right? And like they don't like that kind of stuff. Like, so are you saying I'm not a man? You know, and you're required of this and blah 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 and yada yada and the whole nine yards and this and that. And you say, oh well, I've got a legal person, you know, or not even say I I've got a legal person. Just say, are are you looking for the legal person? You can say that, and they may say, yeah. You know, and that's when I, I showed some people over there like the ID that I'm kind of toying with for no other purpose and just I want to see what happens and you actually get pulled over with it. But I've got my, I think I've very clearly established the roles with the government between me and myself. And the same, and actually what you just said there also about when you, uh, when you contact the government and you, you, you basically state the fact that this and that and the other, okay, that's not a fact yet. That's a presumption. It's not a fact until both parties agree. So if they're going to dispute your claim, they've got a chance to dispute it. If they don't, by default it now becomes a fact because they've agreed by not disputing your claim. That is what makes a fact. So now that you, and then once you default them, you send them a certificate of default. If you ever had another court charge, ever, you just take those two papers the first one and the notice of default and you go and you put copies of those right into the court file and you can even draw up a little order and that's why uh, basically in the chain of command you've got these guys down here 
So if a judge issues an order and he's an employee, who can overrule the judge? Director. Director. Overruled. You've been charged with, you know, the, the legal person's been charged with blah, 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 blah. Overruled. Signed. Director. Who's going to dispute that now? Who's got more authority? Because we all know there's no real injured party in a statutory offense. It's just codes that these guys are supposed to follow. And if they don't get this guy to show up, I don't know how many stories I've heard of people that walk into court and just say, I'm, I'm just the beneficiary. And they sit in the back and the court's like, oh, all right, just sit back there and be the beneficiary then. You have no voice, just sit back there. And then they may all try to offer you something after they find the person guilty. You know, there's a guy in Saskatchewan I know that used to do that. He'd just sit in the back of the courtroom and when they say, well, you know, uh, you know, so-and-so, uh, I, I, had, I had to find, uh, I had to find, I, they'll say you guilty or whatever. It doesn't matter. He'd be like, yeah, he goes, okay, whatever. I don't care. I'm just a beneficiary. I'm not liable for anything anyways. And as soon as they say, well, the Crown has asked for, uh, you know, this amount of money, you say, good, tell them to pay it. Ah! You know, that's when, the, that's when the shit starts. So, yeah, it's over at that point. And they know it. Yep. And that once you understand the roles here, chess becomes an awful lot easier. Yeah, especially when you know the side Exactly. Yep. There you go. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Because it. it <laughs> yep. So I don't. I don't know. I don't know if there's any more questions about that. But that's. So it's a lot easier to 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 preemptively contact them and establish the roles instead of showing up for court for the first time and getting into a shouting match with, with, uh, with a justice. Could you not uh, submit that before court? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, if you get a promise to appear or something, it should be good. That, that's personally what I more so believe administrative remedy is, yeah. is before this meeting that's going to take place, for yeah. all these guys yeah. right yeah. here, yeah. yeah, like you can consider the court the upper management of the trustees. But you're still over, you're still on the board of directors. So if the courtroom is like a like a meeting of upper management and they're holding this meeting, you kinda and you're gonna show up there and they don't know who you are, well damn right, I'd have you arrested too. Like who are you? Right? So establish who you are. And if you really want to still go there, by all means, but just let them know you're coming. Let them know who you are and that you're gonna be showing up. They don't like surprises. Because you might just find that it'll disappear before you get there. Because they don't like stuff on. Without specifically saying that you're the shareholder or director, right? Without actually saying that, just holding your ground and not allowing them to do it. You 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 can't you can't establish your authority without letting them know who you are. I'm not even sure how you would do that. I'd be like a French commander showing up on the on the on the, on the English uh, lines, and 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 just starting to order people around without. Clarifying, you know, without saying what his authority is, right? Like that's why people in the military, like you know, what his authority is. You always know what somebody's authority is by whatever hat, their clothing, their their badge, whatever. Well, ours is going to be paperwork. Well, once you've responded to something like a promise to appear, if you're forced to sort of sign in the first place, except under duress. Yep. Um, you know, sending something like that, they're not going to want to see you in court that day. Yep. Ah, you know what, though, there's one, like once you understand the power structure here, there, there's any number of ways to deal with a ticket. They're not going to like it. Don't do it at the side of the road. I mean, unless they're, you have no license and they're arresting you in the whole nine yards. I usually just go with it, um, like I did last time. And I didn't go with it. They had to smash my window out. And they, but then I, I was being peaceful. And as soon as they smashed the window out, they're like, you, are you going to are you going to come? Because I didn't even give them a name. They wouldn't actually do anything to me. They just smashed out the window and they opened the truck and they're like, are you going to come peacefully now? I said, I've been being peaceful the whole time. You guys, the ones just smashed my window, it wouldn't prove any of your authority, right? You know, on the wall, they're like, uh, you know, get out kind of thing. And I said, are you going to physically harm me if I don't? And they said, yes, we are. We're going to place you under arrest. So I'm like, well, if you're going to harm me, then I guess I'll just come along with you, but it's not you willingly. You don't have to be harmed if they arrest. What's that? You don't have to be harmed if they arrest. It's still an unlawful arrest. Uh, yeah, I just didn't want to be actually physically grabbed and beaten again. So. You don't have a current driver's license. 
register it. How, who registered? Was your vehicle registered? At the time, yeah, because I was uh, registered to my uh, numbered company, I believe, my corporation. So my, my construction company was still registered under that. Okay, but they still, to date, I believe, when you register a vehicle, any vehicle, they want to see you provide a current driver's license. No. Not, as, not, if, it, not if it's for the not if it's for a construction company. Nope. Really? Absolutely not. And not only that, but because I was driving with a plate just because I didn't want to be hassled for a while because I really hated every time they impound my, my vehicles, I sent them a notice. The Attorney General, he gets stuff from me all the time. I'm sure I'm not on his Christmas card list. But uh, I let him know exactly what I was going to be doing. I'm not coy about this stuff. Let them know exactly what you're doing and you say if you guys have a problem with it, then you respond to me in writing. See what they've done in Alberta now. It doesn't matter whether it's private or commercial vehicle. They are attaching a driver's license to everything. Yep. To the even better reason for here. yeah, it's an even better reason for people just to get accustomed to contacting government, asserting their their status, and not driving with a plate anymore at all. Yeah. Period. It's going to argue well even under the Manitoba Highway Traffic Act, you can get an exemption for driving. I don't care about their. I don't need their exemption or care about it. Yeah. yeah. They need my exemption. If you take off a place, then you're uh, inviting them to pull you over. It is, but here's the thing. I like to put a plate on that has some identifying marks so that when they run the plate number, they know it's me. Well, yeah, so I got my own, uh, my own digit. I think I've shown people. We've got a couple of different plates. All right, so I had this one made up. And I sent them notice, and I said, when I'm driving around, you're going to see this plate. It's got my numbers on it, and these identify my property. And the notice has gone into them, right? And there's a fee schedule attached to me when I'm in this, and that's the best reason for it. If you see this number and you pull me over, it costs this much, because you have no reason to pull me over. I'm not performing a function of government. I'm not a government agent. I'm just me. It establishes the... The link. It establishes status, number one, That's right. and it establishes a fee schedule, number two. They should know just by seeing this that I'm obviously not something under their jurisdiction. That's what I'm getting at. Just yes. Just being able to pull up and bring up your that file yes. that's connected to that statement that was sent to, to the government official. Yes. So I do believe that you know there has to be some order to these kind of things. Yeah, and that that is my identifying marks, right? So if I get in an accident, I hit somebody, someone writes my plate number down and says this car just fled the scene of an accident, yeah, right? Well, I've let you guys know what my numbers are. You know where I am. You know where my place of business is. You can get in contact. I'm not trying. In fact, I'm trying to be helpful. I'm trying to really be. This is where to get a hold of me. This is my place of business. Here's my mailing address. Um, it's all linked to the legal person. Okay, how's your liability? What's that? It doesn't need to be. He owns full liability. 